The Legend of Bumbo has now been out for more than an entire week, and the game has been doing great. There have been frequent patches with fixes and improvements with more updates on the way. Back when I was grinding for Bumbo the Empty, which requires two full game completions with each of the other five playable characters, I had an ability that allowed me to pull off a nine tile combo. As a lot of you probably know, the bigger the mana tile match you can pull off, the more powerful the results. By just moving the pieces on the board around, matching seven tiles is easily doable. When seven tiles are matched, an ultimate style ability that is based on the used mana type happens. The seven tile matchups are quite powerful and depending on the situation, they can be game changing. For example, matching four brown mana tiles will allow the player to block an attack lane with a level one barrier. However, matching seven brown mana tiles will automatically defend all three attack lanes with level three damage barriers. Just for the record, especially if you are still working towards unlocking Bumbo the Empty, damage barriers are an excellent tool to utilize in your gameplay, so definitely be looking out for opportunities to lay them down. Anyway, if seven tiles is such a powerful jump up, what would nine tiles be like? I already know how the gray mana tiles work out, but I decided to revisit this by using Bumbo the Stout, who can easily manipulate three columns at once, making nine tile matchups as easy or as difficult as creating a particular pattern on the board, followed by using the move in the right spot. We are gonna go through and match up nine tiles of each and every mana type, uh, though it is worth noting that I have not tried this with cursed tiles, which can be used offensively if you are lucky enough to get a certain trinket. First up on the list is brown mana. As mentioned before, matching seven brown mana tiles will block all three attack lanes with level three barriers, which you can see here. Just like the other seven tile matches, in the right situations, this can be extremely helpful. I regularly relied on the barriers for earning enough time to make the nine tile matchups that I show in this video. Moving on now, you can see how I've set up the nine tile matchup here. The Stout's ability will remove the tile you select as well as the tiles to the top, right, down, and left. By removing a bottom tile, you will only be removing the top, right, and left tiles, meaning that anything in the column you choose that is not being eliminated will drop two spaces while the columns to the left and right of your piece choice will only drop by one. That's the matchup method I will be using throughout this video, but there are more methods for pulling off a nine tile match. This just happens to be the most easily repeatable way for the video. As you've now seen, there is nothing different about seven and nine brown mana matchups. You even earn the same amount of brown mana. You get nine for the seven tile match and nine for the nine tile match. Next up, we will be repeating the process, but with gray mana. We'll match up seven of the tiles and check the results. This puzzle attack is one of my favorites and is extremely powerful for clearing the early rooms. It's not difficult to one-hit every single room up to about the third chapter with it. Um, anyway, with nine tiles, just like the brown mana, as you'll see here, there is nothing different. It's already a powerful move, but it would be cool if there were something else. It's already seeming like an obvious pattern here, but we'll move on to green mana anyway. A four tile green mana matchup allows you to throw goo down an attack lane, locking down whatever enemy it hits until the enemy moves. The seven tile matchup is a huge bit more powerful and locks down the entire room and the goo lasts for two enemy moves instead of one. Now we can drop the nine tile match and see that unfortunately here again, there is nothing different with matching up more than seven tiles. The results are the same. I'm still going to show the other matchups I got and maybe you can point out something I'm missing from them. White mana is another seven tile favorite of mine next to the gray mana. I use the white mana matchup when I'm trying to do lots of damage to a single enemy, like in boss fights. When you match seven, a skeleton literally rains bones on enemies, or just a single enemy that you've got in the room. It's extremely powerful and puts out a lot more damage than simply matching bones regularly. I just want to mention here as a small tip, you should definitely be looking out for matches of five plus mana tiles when you can. Just keep in mind what kind of damage you've got to do to particular enemies in the room and be strategic about it. That being said, let's check out the nine. After matching nine bones and really hoping for something a little different, it looks like we've got more of the same here. It is still a cool attack, uh, but no need to push for anything more than seven tiles here. Okay, last up we have yellow mana. Yellow mana is the most mana-esque matchup in the game. It simply gives you mana and sends you another move. Matching more than four tiles will give you more than one move back. This can definitely be used to your advantage in lots of situations, and for me, it was the only way to make Bumbo the Dead feel playable. Anyway, matching seven simply gives you more mana as well as more moves back. And to be the bearer of bad news, though I will show it anyway, matching nine tiles does the exact same thing. To be honest, I don't think it's a bad thing that there aren't incentives or uses to match tiles beyond seven. 
I think the game's got a great balance to thought and strategy, and as it is, I already feel like I regularly go a little too out of my way to form the seven tile matches, and I know that I'd have the same obsession, if not worse, with going for nine. I do, however, think there should be at least a couple extra mana points gained for the additional board pieces consumed, but hey, we'll see what happens, I guess. Anyway, the game is a ton of fun. It feels well put together and is receiving plenty of love from its community as well as its team. Looking forward to seeing how this game changes in its future, but I don't think there's any rush for the title to try being anything different than what it is right now. Uh, that is it for this video, though. I've got a few more Legend of Bumbo videos on the way, so look out for them. If you've watched the video this far, you've helped it out a lot, and I can't thank you enough for that. I hope you enjoyed it. We're coming up on 19,000 subscribers, which feels insane that the milestone may even be reached by the time you're watching this video. But anyway, I really do hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you. Thank you for watching and supporting me. It's very well appreciated. Till next time, take care.